Welcome back to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast. I'm Nick Berlanski. That's Nick Horowat. We're talking Penguins here with a couple of weeks to go until the opening of the 2023 Pittsburgh Penguins training camp out in Cranberry at the UPMC Lemieux Complex. Horowat, last week, flying back from my honeymoon, land at Reagan National Airport. During that flight, obviously a, a pretty decent length flight from Arizona, I'm writing down some ideas because it is the slow season. There's not a lot of news, so we have to come up with some some interesting ideas. Hence, you know, worst case scenario, hence talking about Tomas Tatar, despite nobody saying anything about him in over two weeks. And the flight attendant comes over the loudspeaker and says, just to let everybody know, your baggage will be in carousel nine. I'm like thinking nine. Nine. Ah, let's just talk about Pascal Dupuy. So here we are, uh, three episodes later. Wanted to ask you, Horwat, where do you place Pascal Dupuy among Sidney Crosby's line mates in his career? Where do you rank him? That's that's a, that one's actually kind of a tough one because he was never really supposed to be uh, a Crosby line mate when he got here. Uh, and when it comes to the top ones, Chris Kunitz always comes to mind right away for the longevity of it. Mm -hmm. um jake Gensel comes to mind for the what have you done for me lately aspect dupuis slots in there pretty early on just as a notable face of do you remember those teams from the mid 2010s or a little before uh that were good there was one of them that wasn't we're a good team but couldn't get it couldn't really get it done and pascal dupuis was a first line player for those that's where he yeah. slides into this conversation. It's, well, what was he doing up there? I mean, clearly there was a reason. And yeah, I think I think we look at it and we remember him early on, but I don't know how good of a linemate he really was uh, in general for Sidney mm -hmm. Crosby. And Patrick Hornquist comes to mind ahead of him. Uh, you could throw, because now here's the thing, now all the other names are going to escape me because of this. Yeah. Um, and that's also a big part of it. You forget who Crosby's played with over the years, but you remember Pascal Dupuis for so many reasons. A, he won. B, uh, it was one of those fan favorite guys, locker room mm -hmm. guy, locker room helpers, locker room veterans, and did a ton for the morale of the team. I'd say he's in the middle of the pack, though, when it comes to Cindy Crosby line mates. He's definitely above Dominic Simone. How about that? <laughs> it's funny. I do have Dominic Simone down here, but he is very, very low on yeah. the list. I, I I have him. I put it into a tiered list. And I have him in a uh, tier called the others. So uh, <laughs> that's if, if you want to know how I feel about Dominic Simone's uh, ability to play with Crosby, that's where he's at. But Pascal Dupuy played nine seasons with the Pittsburgh Penguins, 452 games, 109 goals, 247 points. He also played 77 games in the postseason, scoring 14 goals and 33 points. And of course, you know, to keep the theme here with nines, he won the Stanley Cup with the Penguins in 2009. He was also with the team in 2016, but at that point he had already uh, been finished playing due to the, the unforeseen medical circumstances that ended his career. So a good career with the Pittsburgh Penguins. You mentioned that he, you know, was on those teams that were good, but not great and couldn't succeed in the playoffs. You know, it, it's funny because at this stage now, Gensel Crosby has been together pretty much or, or getting close to as long as Kunitz Crosby was. Yeah. But people often forget that it was not just Kunitz Crosby. For a lot of those years, as you mentioned, it was Kunitz Crosby Dupuis. And the Pittsburgh Penguins did not have to worry at all about who was going to be playing on their top line. Not just because of the longevity of those three guys together, but also the chemistry of those three guys together. I have a much higher you know, thought of... Pascal Dupuis when it comes to ranking him and when it comes to this list. Now, I agree with you. The top two is my top tier, and it's Chris Kunitz and it's Jake Gensel. Jake Gensel's probably a better player than Chris Kunitz ever was when it comes to individually how he is. But you look at the way that Kunitz and Crosby just complemented each other. Even in a year in 2017 where they weren't playing together, they were not playing together. They got together to create one of the biggest goals in franchise history in game seven yeah. against the Ottawa senators. Their chemistry was off the charts from the beginning to the end. And Pascal Dupuis was right there along with them. 
right? I mean, for some reason, the one thing that comes to mind is I don't remember what year it was, but it was the first game of the season. Penguins at console against the Anaheim Ducks. Dupuis scores two goals. And I'm just like, man, it's it's great seeing these three back on the ice together because it was Kunitz, Crosby, Dupuy. It was early on. They scored, I think, five minutes into the game. And I was like, this is going to be a great season because that line is already clicking once again. So, you know, I would say it's it's Gensel, Kunitz, and you can argue whoever you want to argue is number one in that. I would put Dupuy in the next tier. I'd put him alongside Patrick Hornfist and Brian Rust. I think that it's those two plus Dupuy, that's the second tier for me. And that's where I put them. Do you want to know what, what year that was? What year was that? Was that the 2014-15 year that they ended up sucking? Well, yes. not sucking, but they were almost out of the playoffs. It took Brandon Sutter scoring against the Buffalo Sabres in the last game of the year. Yes, and actually that game was a bit more high-flying than uh, any of us remember. It was a 6-4 six six to four final. 6-4. Six 6-4 four. Six yeah. four final. The Patrick Hornquist got it started. Crosby, Dupuy. Uh, Corey Perry scored. T- sorry, Corey Perry scored a hat trick. <laughs> uh yeah he scored yeah he scored twice to open the second and then the final goal of the game uh it, but somehow brandon sutter who just signed a pto with edmonton by the way mm-hmm. uh shorthanded goal a minute into the third period to for the sixth goal of the game for the penguins what a wild game this may have actually been yeah um, i was watching that game at quaker steak and lube in johnstown do you remember those do any of those exist because another one in johnstown does not I've ne- I like I have not heard about them at all. So every there's gonna be a weird tangent sidebar. Every time we drive past one of the empty buildings that used to be one, me and Megan always discuss how they may have gotten completely defranchised, but some of them are coming back. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. So I don't know the exact lore behind it, but I do remember them. Uh, I haven't eaten in one in a long time, so if they all go away, I'm not gonna notice. <laughs> but the all the buildings and the it's like seeing an old pizza hut they're still there and you know exactly what it was just by yeah. the building design uh anyway let's pull this back to the penguins <laughs> pascal dupuy yeah yeah i have a, i have him in the second tier i would say patrick hornfist is probably number three on my list um just for the success that those you know those hornfist crosby kunitz lines or hornfist crosby gensel lines uh, for the success that they were able to have I would put Hornquist at number three, um, just because also because he was such a change from anything that the Penguins had had. He was the most physical. He was the most domineering. He was the biggest net front presence that they had had, you know, outside of Kunitz. So I would put Hornquist at number three, and then I think it's a it's a toss up between Rust and Dupuis. At his best, I think Rust is a better player, but Dupuis, the longevity and the consistency that he was able to have during his career in Pittsburgh, um, it was impressive. It was impressive, especially being able to be that number three guy uh, and still be able to eat as well as he did. I mean, he was, you know, there were times where you were looking at that line and you're like, man, Pascal Dupuis is the finisher here. And, you know, a lot of people also forget he was a speedster. You know, he had some blinding speed and uh, he was able to keep up with Crosby better than Kunitz was. But Kunitz was that, you know, change of pace, big guy, even though he wasn't that big. But, you know, Kunitz used to lay the body pretty good. Mm hmm. So did so did Dupuis for what it's worth. A couple seasons, yeah. well over a hundred hits. Uh, and I just look at the last four recorded seasons from Dupuis and go, "Wow, we really, or at least three of the last four, because that last one's a bit of a struggle, but we know why." Yeah. Um, but the forty-eight game shortened season, he had thirty-eight total points of twenty goals. That's a pretty solid year. And he was goals in forty-eight games. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely he was definitely playing alongside Sidney Crosby there because that was the year. Oh wait. No, things get weird because that was the Malkin Kunitz year. Um, but he follows up that with a 39 game season and 20 points. Then in in the 14 15 season that we just discussed with the Anaheim Ducks game, he only played 16 games that year, but had 11 points. Yeah. At 11. I think he had like four in that first game, but it's, <laughs> it's still pretty ridiculous that we underrate him in terms of scoring and just kind of know him as a line mate. Yet, I mean, it, in these the close to the end of his career, he was putting up some pretty decent numbers here. So, yeah, you got to give him that boost. I mean, I came up with my answer without looking at the sheer numbers of it mm-hmm. and just kind of knowing he was always the guy that definitely wasn't as skilled as many of the others on the list that you would that you might list off, but uh, was there for the longevity and you know had plenty of speed, could throw the body, and 
could play defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, to finish out this list, he, here's the other tiers that I had, and I probably missed a couple here and there, but you know, above average, I'd say Connor Sherry. Um, I'd say Mark Recchi because it was t- towards the tail end of his career, even though he did go on to play another like seven years in the NHL. He, he didn't play too long uh, with Sidney Crosby. I put Mark Recchi in there. Colby Armstrong, I would put in in that third tier. Bill Guerin, I would also put in that third tier. Again, didn't play for very long alongside Sidney Crosby. And then there's the others. I'd put Dom Simone and Ryan Malone. Like That's where I would have those two. I don't totally hate that, but my light just shut off. So uh... I saw that. I saw it. It got pretty dark on the other side of the screen there. What? <laughs> it didn't want but... to hear anyone else on this list. It, it, it's had enough. It said, you know, I don't want to hear about Connor Sherry. Come on, man. Like, don't don't talk to me about that guy. But no, uh, Sherry, you know, all these guys. It's interesting because you think of Crosby line mates. The first one you think of is usually, you know, Chris Kunitz besides <laughs> Jake Ensel, who's up there now. I think Ricard Raquel, after a couple more seasons, could probably jump up this list. You know, I didn't put him on this list because it's only been one year. And, you know, he only played, I guess, Recky only played like one or two years with Crosby. Mm-hmm. And same with Garen. So I guess he'd probably be in the above average right now. But that longevity could put him into that maybe tier two, maybe above uh, Dupuy if he plays out the rest of his career and Crosby's still playing the next five years and they're still succeeding as well as they did last year. He's got five years to work with, so you got plenty of time to yeah. knock it out of the park. Yeah, it's insane how many different eras there are, like sub eras in the Sidney Crosby era. So, uh, but regardless, you know, Pascal Dupuis wanted to give him a little bit of light. Nobody really talks about Dupuis all that much. So, uh, there you go. Um, late August, early September. That's 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 the wheelhouse for Duper. Um, but that is going to do it for this episode of the Tip of the Iceberg. Man, we need training camp to start. 